yesterday, I believe many of us worship Sri Giriraj by performing Parikrama. Uh, how many of you performed the Parikrama yesterday? I could tell how you are all, or many of you are performing a kirtan of coughing. <laughs> Congregational coughing. <laughs> which is certainly a symptom of your sincere parikrama yesterday. Unlimited glories of Krishna are non different than the unlimited glories of the hill named Govardhan. Just as Lord Krishna descended from the highest planet in the spiritual world, Goloka. So did the forest of Vrindavan, Yamuna Devi, and Shigiriraj Govardhan. The Garga Samhita tells a beautiful story of how Govardhan Hill manifested in the spiritual world. Of course, everything in this spiritual world is eternal, without beginning and without end. But for the sake of Leela, there is incredible and oftentimes inconceivable variegatedness for only one purpose, which is the singular purpose of life. For Krishna, the supreme absolute truth, to exchange love through his pleasure potency and through his infinite parts and parcels. And for each part and parcel to taste Krishna's love and to exist simply to offer love. This world, which is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world, is a place where people forgetful that the real object of all love is the supreme soul, the all-attractive, Rasa Bihari, Sri Krishna. We try to find satisfaction by reposing our need to find pleasure in the various temporary objects, animate or inanimate, within this creation, only to be inevitably frustrated. Krishna tells in Gita, Abrama bhuvanar loka punar avatanarjana mamu peitya punar janmana vidyate. From the highest planet in this material existence to the lowest, they are all essentially places of misery because everything is temporary. Janma mrittu jaravyagi dukkha doshanu darshana. Whoever we are, we must 
pass through birth, old age, disease, and death. Krishna is explaining from the perspective of the Creator. We can have philosophers, poets, novelists, prophets, academic scholars, write hundreds of millions of books, scientists, about how this creation is working. But it is a chintya. It is inconceivable. And the reason it is inconceivable is because it is the manifestation of Krishna who is inconceivable. Om Purnam Ata Purnam Idam. This phenomenal relative world, its source is Krishna. And Krishna's maya is ruling over this material existence. This maya is Krishna's energy. And she's all powerful. So Srila Prabhupada was very strong to repeatedly assert this point that if we actually want to transcend the sufferings of material existence, if we want to go beyond the inevitable fate of this body, which is death, we must receive knowledge from the source of all knowledge. Vedais to Sarvaraham Eva Vedyo. Krishna says, I am the compiler of the Vedas and I am the knower of Vedanta. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. Krishna knows every minute detail of how his existence is working. Vedaham samatitani vartamanani tarjuna. Krishna knows everything that has ever happened in the past of all the universes, in all creations. He knows everything that's happening now. He hears every word. He hears every thought. He sees every action of every tree, every plant. He knows exactly how each stone and each grain of sand is moving about or not moving about. Krishna knows everything. He's in and between every atomic particle. And besides that, nothing could happen unless sanctioned directly or indirectly by his energies. So when Krishna is telling us in Bhagavad Gita how material existence works, it's not someone else's opinion. It's the statement of the Creator. And therefore his words are absolute because he is absolute. Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachit Ananda Vikra. Krishna is the supreme controller of all controllers. And he has three eternal features. His all-pervading, impersonal Brahman, which is the ultimate destination for those who seek the impersonal form of mukti, the paramatma, the Lord who is seated within the heart of every living being as our ultimate friend and benefactor and witness, and Bhagavan, whose body is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss, 
who is living in a spiritual realm where he invites all living beings into his beautiful pastimes. Krish means attraction. Na means unlimited. Krishna is unlimitedly attractive. To the extent we experience even a drop of Krishna's fathomless oceanic nature of beauty, Even the greatest pleasures in this world, Yamunacharya said, things that we're all so attached to, he said, the thought of it makes my lips curl in distaste, and I spit at the thought. What is that spitting? It's not spitting on the things of this world or the people in this world. It's spitting on the egoistic, selfish motivation of wanting to be the enjoyer. Because that tendency to want to be the enjoyer is the source of all pain. Bhoktaram jagatapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhradam sarva bhutanam gyatvamam shanti mirchchati. Krishna tells in Gita, if you just understand these three simple principles, you could be happy and peaceful forever. That Krishna is the proprietor of everything. That our greatest fulfillment is just utilizing whoever we are, whatever we have, for Krishna's pleasure and knowing that in every situation, if we turn to Krishna, he's always our intimate, most well-wishing friend. As Krishna is all attractive, in Goloka, his pleasure potency Srimati Radharani is all attractive. She is the ultimate source of attraction for Krishna. So Radha, Krishna, and gopis were sitting together in Goloka Vrindavan. Now before I tell the story, Another philosophical observation. It is, Prabhupada told us that one of the features of the spiritual world beyond the three modes of material nature is that time is conspicuous by its absence. But you read in the scriptures of how Yashoda Mai is waiting for Krishna with Nanda Maharaj and all the gopis as they're going, as they're out herding the calves or the cows throughout the day. And when Krishna is with the gopis at night, the cows and the calves are just dreaming of waiting for that moment for the sun to rise when they'll be with Krishna with all the gopas in the pastures again. So when we use the word when in the context of the spiritual realm, time is conspicuous by its absence because the time of the spiritual world is working under the power of yoga maya. In this material world, Krishna showed time in its very, very blatant truth in the Gita when he manifested the Virat Rupa, the universal form. And Arjuna saw everything being devoured by this universal form. Krishna said, time I am. By the power of time, and for us, 
because of our relative tininess. When I give a lecture, it seems like a really long time, although it's actually just a couple hours. But the reality is even the great Himalayan mountains, the Swiss Alps, the Rocky Mountains, in a matter of just a little bit of time, they will all be ground into fine, dusty powder. The Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, all of these oceans will be utterly dry. The sun will fizzle out like a little match. And all the planets of the universe disappear. Now, from the absolute perspective, all this happens many, many, many times in the extent of time that Krishna inhales and exhales as Mahavishnu. But in the spiritual world, because everything is eternal, everything is full of knowledge, and everything is full of bliss, such it ananda, Time is an energy of yoga maya, simply to facilitate the rasas, the sweet nectar of loving relationships between Krishna and his devotees and all the devotees with each other. So one day, one day, Radharani turned to Lord Krishna in the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan. And she said, my dear, my dear Shamsundar, if you are pleased with my love, with all the gopis' love, if you are pleased with these enchanting forests of Vrindavan and with our Rasa Leela, then I have one desire that I wish you to fulfill. Lord Krishna smiled and said, whatever you desire is the love of my life. Sri Radharani, she said, we desire that you create the supreme, most pleasing place for us to perform our pastimes. Of course, we learn from the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that Sri Radha and gopis, when they express a desire, their only desire is Krishna's happiness. They make themselves beautiful only for Krishna's happiness. They are happy only because that makes Krishna happy. And sometimes in separation they cry only to give Krishna happiness because whatever they do is an expression of their love. So please create a supremely enjoyable place for all of us to perform our pastimes. Krishna smiled and he said, so be it. And then he turned his meditation, his full attention into the very core of his heart where he meditated upon the deepest essence of his own love. And that love manifest from Krishna's heart in the form of a seed 
that appeared to be made out of fire and water. That seed entered into the ground where the Rasa Lila would take place. And right in front of Sri Radha and Krishna and Gopi's eyes, that little seed began to grow. And within moments, it became a hill and then a magnificent mountain. Seeing this, the greatest joy came upon Radha Gopinath. And Ra Krishna took Radharani by the hand and the gopis followed and they explored this incredible hill which was the manifestation of Krishna's love. And that is Govardhan Hill in the spiritual world. We read in Srimad Bhagavatam how Krishna promised Lord Brahma that he would descend into the material world. Yada yada hi dharmasya gdhanir bhavati bharata abhyutam adharmasya tadatmanam shajamyaham. And Krishna expressed to Sri Radharani in the spiritual world that he was going to descend. And he wanted her to descend with him to reveal pastimes of the highest expression of spiritual realization, prema bhakti. Once in a day of Brahma, eight billion six hundred and forty million years does Radha Krishna appear from Goloka Vrindavan to perform their pastimes. Very special. Sri Radharani told Krishna that I will not find much happiness without the forests of Vrindavan the river Yamuna, and the Govardhan Hill, because these are Krishna's favorite places. And they, they're so dear to Krishna because they're Radharani's favorite places. And they're so dear to Radharani that they're, because they're Krishna's favorite places. Therefore, these places are ever increasingly giving happiness to both Radha Gopinath. Krishna told Sri Radharani that the forests of Vrindavan, the river Yamuna, and Govardhan Hill have already descended into this world to facilitate our pastimes. The Puranas tell how Giriraj descended from Goloka just west of Bharadvarsha. And he was the son of Dronachala. And when he appeared, every mountain in the whole universe realized that this mountain has descended from the spiritual world of Goloka. And they all worshiped Govardhan Hill performed parikrama of Govardhan Hill and accepted that Govardhan Hill is the king of all mountains. Now there may be different types of kings of mountains, but Giriraj is the king of all kings because he's not different than Krishna. And simultaneously he gives the greatest pleasure to Krishna. This took place long ago. In the Satya Yuga, Pulastya Muni, one of the great sages, he went to this area called Samalidvip, and there he saw the beauty of Govardhan, and he just felt 
so much happiness. He asked Dronachala, I want to take your son with me. I have been doing a yatra all over the world. And I'm, my place of residence is Kashi. The river Ganges floats there. But I want to take Govardhan and sit on top and do my meditation. Now, on one hand, it's like Vishwamitra Muni asking for Ram. Dronachala, how can I give up the association of my son? More dear to me than my life. But at the same time, he didn't want to make an offense to a great sage. So Govardhan, he understood what his purpose in this world was. It was to come to Braj Bhumi. So he made his plan. He said, my dear father, I will go. I want to go. I want to go with this great sage. But how are you going to take me? Pulasya Muni said, I will carry you in my right hand by my mystical powers. At that time, Govardhan was very, very big size. Govardhan said, I will go with you on the condition that you agree, if anywhere you put me down, I will stay there. Pulasya Muni said, it is agreed. And he lifted Giriraj. And by his mystical powers, he could travel in the sky. And they came all the way from Samalidvip, and they, as they were just passing over Braj Bhumi, Giriraj, the king of mountains, was thinking, this is my eternal residence. So he became heavy. And Pulasya Muni had to come to the ground, holding Giriraj up to rest. But then, by Krishna's inconceivable arrangement, Krishna can perform the most historical episodes in history in such simple ways. Suddenly, by Krishna's arrangement, who's the, he's the controller of all controllers, Pulasya Muni had to respond to the call of nature. We all know what that's like. Now, he's a yogi. So he knows how to control all of these impulses and by his yogic powers. But Krishna is Yogeshwar. <laughs> He's the supreme master of all yogis who can conquer any yogi. So somehow or other, he needed to pass water. And he lost his intelligence and just was focused on that alone. And he put Govardhan down and went <laughs> off to the side and passed water, and then he washed himself, and he came back to pick up Giriraj, and Giriraj did not move. He forgot. Sarvasya chaham hridishani vishtomata smityar jnanam apohanam cha. Krishna says in Gita, I am the source of remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. And in this case, Krishna was the source of his forgetfulness. And if Krishna wants you to forget, it doesn't matter how many brain cells you have. You can't remember anything. And if Krishna wants you to remember, it doesn't matter if you don't have a brain at all. If you're in the ICU intensive care unit with brain hemorrhaging and you're in a total coma, if Krishna wants you to remember, you'll be seeing his pastimes in Vrindavan while everyone else is thinking, oh, my poor loved one.
pushti, pushti marg, the path of grace. Bhakti is the path of grace. If Krishna is pleased with the sincerity of our service, the sincerity of our endeavor, those two fingers we've been discussing, if we just serve with genuine sincerity and enthusiasm, with the right motivations, then we attract Krishna's mercy. And ultimately that mercy is our only qualification. Bhaktyatvananiyashakya aham evam vidurjana. In Gita, Krishna tells, through, only through devotion, bhakti, can I be seen as I am standing before you. Premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena. When our eyes are decorated with the ornament of bhakti, then Krishna reveals himself. So in this incredible pastime, the greatest king of all mountains that descended into this, from the spiritual world of Goloka down to this world found its place in Sri Bhumi through this incredible pastime of Krishna. Pulastya Muni, again, Krishna in his heart, he became angry momentarily and he cursed Govardhan. Because you're, not, because you're not coming with me to Kashi, I curse you that every day you're going to shrink in size the length of a mustard seed. Now, for us, that's not much. But when you're thinking about millions and millions of years, it's a lot. This was Krishna's arrangement. Because this is in Satya Yuga. And Krishna was going to appear in Dwapara Yuga. And Govardhan Hill was just too big to have such pastimes. In those days, Govardhan Hill its dimensions were huge. Its peaks were above the clouds. So Pulastya Muni was an agent of Krishna's will so that when Krishna came to this world, Govardhan was so nice, just the right size for, for his calves to be frolicking up and down and the gopas and the gopis. And Giriraj was just waiting. Treta Yuga came. And the Supreme Lord Krishna appeared as Lord Rama. And we know the story how Ram and Sita and Lakshman were banished into the forest for 14 years. And while they were living not far from Mumbai or Pune in Panchavati. Suparnaka came and she wanted to cause harm to Sita. So Lakshman cut off her nose. And from that time on, it is called Nasik. It's a place, one of the four places of Kumbha Mela where the river Godavari comes together with the river Kapila, Dave. I mean, Kapila. Anyways, it was there in Nasik that Ravana stole Sita and brought her to Sri Lanka. And Hanuman discovered her. And with all of the great army of the Vanaras, the monkeys and the bears, they were building a bridge 800 miles long, 100 miles wide across the Indian Ocean from the Rameshwaram area to Sri, to Sri Lanka. And 
We know the story of the little spiders and squirrels that were just kicking grains of sand, and Ram was accepting their service every bit as he was Hanuman and the very, very most powerful monkeys lifting up entire mountains to float in the water in the bridge. And they were so enthusiastic. They were going all over the place, just picking up these mountains and giant rocks. And in Vrindavan, we hear the story of how Numan came here and went to pick up Govardhan and compare it, compare it to some of the other mountains that Hanumanji was lifting, Govardhan was not so big or heavy in size, but he couldn't get Govardhan off the ground. So Hanumanji understood by his pure, unalloyed love and devotion to Sri Rama that this mountain is sacred. This mountain is worshipable. So he offered his Dandavat pranams and he began to worship Giriraj with love and devotion and ask permission. Please allow me to lift you up so I can help build a bridge to reconnect Ram and Sita. And Govardhan said, yes, I will make myself light and you may take me. And when he was just about to go, Hanuman heard a voice that we don't need any more mountains because the bridge is complete. So Govardhan was sad. I wanted to have darshan with Sri Ram. Tell Ram my heart. So Hanuman went back and after the build, the bridge and everything else that happened in Sri Lanka, he came back to Govardhan to give Ram's message that Ram is going to descend in his original transcendental form of Krishna in Vrindavan. And here you will facilitate the innermost intimate loving pastimes of Sita Ram, Sarada and Krishna and all of their gopas and gopis. So Govardhan waited. We discussed on the day of Govardhan Puja how Krishna showed the incredible faith of the bridge Basis. We, we cannot explain this too many times. In his own little childlike way, at the age of seven, he put their lives at total risk. For generations, this Indra Puja was going on because they need rain. And please understand, in those days, the devatas, people understood them as factual personalities. Today, if you tell someone, don't, don't worship this demigod because, you know, you, sh you should do something else, well, we really don't know if it works anyway. We, 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 just, we just do it because we think they're there or because somebody told us they're there. Or they might be there just in case they're there. <laughs> but these were very highly elevated beings in Dwarpa Yuga. They knew as a fact that Indra was supplying the rain. And Krishna said, forget Indra. He's just the instrument of our karma. Take all this puja paraphernalia, all of this food, and offer it to Govardhan Hill and to the cows and the Brahmins. The Brijabhasi showed their ultimate state. They were not concerned with life or death. 
They were just concerned with pleasing Krishna. And if this is what pleases you, Krishna, we'll do it. There's no other consideration. The real success of whatever our duties may be, spiritual, occupational, domestic, is that we please Krishna. Sarva dharman puritya ma me kam sharanam prachya. And in this very simple way, Nanda, Yashoda, and all the Brijabhasis manifested this abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to giving pleasure to Krishna. And they didn't even know he's God. So beautiful. They just loved him. And Indra sent his reins, and Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill. But before doing that, he manifested as Govardhan Hill. He manifested a huge form and said, I am the hill Govardhan. <laughs> <laughs> 